a number of inmates. Uh, you may remember in 2011 the widespread demonstrations against the government which were quelled with the help of troops from neighbouring Saudi Arabia. Uh, human rights groups uh, say that many of those detained are political campaigners uh, who uh, have been um, sort of caught up in wide-ranging terror laws. We're now going to talk to Mariam al Khawaja, who's co-director of the Gulf Centre for Human Rights, joins us from Denmark. Uh, what do we know, uh, Mariam, or what have you heard about the prison escape? Because the government is saying terrorists on their way out. How would you describe the people who got out? Well, from what we've seen so far and from the names that have been released by the government, uh, these are people who were arrested, uh, many of them arbitrarily. They were subjected to severe torture during their uh, after their arrest. They were not given due process. They were subjected to unfair trials. Uh, and after those unfair trials, many of them were given very, very heavy, lengthy sentences, some of them sentenced to more than 120 years in prison. Um, and what is more important than that is after they were put in prison, some of them kept being subjected to torture. And so they were in a situation where um, even after their their torture was done and after they were sentenced, they were still in a position where they had nothing to lose because they had more than 100 years imprisonment sentences and they were in a situation where they were constantly under the threat of being tortured again. Right. I just want to clarify, as far as you understand, are many of the people who escaped, were they caught up in the political turmoil, the demonstrations against the, uh, the, the, the ruling family in 2011? Yes. Right, so that's the majority of the people. So when the government describes them as terrorists, that's that's their interpretation of the people who uh, took to the streets, who who were part of that campaign. That, that's who oh, we're talking about. Yeah. Yes, I mean under the ter- the anti-terrorism law in Bahrain, what's important to understand is that the definition of terrorism in Bahrain is so vague, and that was done on purpose that even the work of a human rights activist can be considered terrorism under that law. Now, would you just explain? I mean, it's a violent attack, which obviously. Uh, needs some degree of planning, of infrastructure, of material and training as well. Um, Who might be behind this? Because you would need quite an infrastructure to do this. Who do you think uh, suspicion would fall on? Well, we still don't know what the case is. There's a lot of missing information. Uh, to understand what happened, we, you need to understand where this prison is and how it's set up. The security is so high uh, that it's almost impossible to escape from that prison. Um, and it's also located in the desert, which means even if you're able to get through the several levels of uh, layers of uh, security at the prison and are able to make it to the main gate to get out, um, there's still a, a huge desert that you have to pass um, before you can get anywhere to safety where you you can hide. And so the idea that, that these people were able to escape prison and get to, to hiding, and apparently so far they have not been able to catch them, is very suspicious to a lot of us, which is why we're still waiting to have more information before we know uh, or we can comment on sure. what happened. I mean, wh- one thing that I have to put to you is that the government would say the violence of the attack and the organisation would prove their point that the people involved in this are part of what they would see as a terrorist organisation. Well, I mean, the the government has been saying that there are terrorist organizations in the country for a very long time, and this predates the uprising in Bahrain. There's something that goes back to the 1990s and before then. Um, And and so far, we haven't really seen evidence of any kind kind of armed conflict or armed uh, groups in the country. Bahrain is a very small country. It's pretty easy to know when these kind of things happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible that it has happened. It's been um, six years now since the beginning of the uprising. We have, as human rights campaigners, said over and over again, if people are not allowed to peacefully protest, if their rights are taken away, if the condition is what it is in Bahrain today, uh, and especially because of the inaction of the internet international community where the Bahraini government has had international immunity from any kind of accountability for the human rights violations, that people at some point will probably turn to violence, which is what nobody wants to see in the country. Well, listen, many thanks indeed for joining us. Uh, Co-director of the Gulf Centre for Human Rights, that was uh, Mariam Al-Khawaja with the details. Uh, Sketchy, as she uh, says, uh, of that uh, dramatic uh, prison escape, the sort of uh, the prison in the middle of the desert, uh, the dramatic jailbreak, and um, it seems a number of inmates have got out. Let's get the sports news now with Matthew.